Hello everybody and welcome back to SFF 180. Thomas here, your host as always. It is Mailbag Monday for the 27th of March and I'm very glad you could join me. Hope you guys have had a good week. I had a really nice uh, second half of last week. Uh, spent some time in Austin, which I really, really needed. It was wonderful. And so now let's uh, let's get back to it. Um, there's going to be at least one new review this week, so keep an eye open for that. Uh, but otherwise, busy mailbag this week. At least 14 packages, I count, when I got back. Huge pile. So I think we're just not going to waste a whole heck of a lot of time and get right into them. Okay, and first up we have something that looks like... It's from the Hatchette group. Probably an Orbit. No, it is not an Orbit title. This is the finished copy uh, from Little Brown Publishing of a, a book that is unlike a lot of YA. Uh, one that I'm pretty eager to read because the author is Claudia Gray. Claudia Gray has written like several Star Wars novels and this is called Defy the Stars and it's a YA space opera of sorts. Uh, let's see. This one comes out April the 4th. In Defy the Stars, teen female soldier Noemi crosses paths with robot Abel. He should be only one thing to her, an enemy, yet turns into so much more. When the disastrous aftermath of a space battle strands her on an abandoned enemy ship, she encounters a deadly mech determined to kill her, until a twist in his programming compels him to do her bidding, and to reveal a secret which could save her world. Abel, Model 1A of the Mansfield Cybernetics line, is his creator's masterpiece, the most complex mech prototype ever made. He not only appears perfectly human, but possesses an artificial intelligence so sophisticated that he can feel human emotions. All right, well, here's where we're going to get the robot love going on. What do we have? Okay, when Noemi boards the ship, he has been trapped on for decades. His programming demands that he obey her as hers has his new commander. Even if she's fighting on the other side of the war, and her plan to win that war will kill him. As they embark upon a dangerous journey through the galaxy, Noemi begins to recognize the soul within the machine, of course. And Abel's devotion to Noemi becomes more than a matter of programming. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sounds like, it sounds a bit rich and a bit camp, uh, but uh, there you have it. Defy the stars. Um, could have some fun action and, and storytelling going on, uh, but in any event, it comes out April the 4th from Little Brow by Claudia Gray, Defy the Stars. And I guessed right, uh, at least in this package, these are some of the April Random Penguin titles. This one here is from Ace. It's called Gauntlet, the author is Holly Jennings, and uh, this appears to be the sequel to her novel Arena, which came out from Ace last year, and which I might as well get around to reading, I suppose. Anyway, but Gauntlet, it just continues the adventures of Kali Ling, it says, who has faced down death hundreds of times for the entertainment of millions. She knows fear, and she knows what's truly terrifying. So, Gauntlet is an April title from Ace. And next up from Daw, we have Redder Than Blood. This appears to be part of Daw's ongoing program of re-releasing the work of the late Tanith Lee. And these are, this is a collection of short stories uh, that are based on various fairy tales. It says, uh, yes, this in, uh, and it's uh, the, f the follow-on to an earlier collection called Red As Blood. And it says, uh, Tanith Lee deconstructed familiar fairy tales, recapturing their original darkness and horror in haunting new interpretations. Behind gilded words and a poised... Oh, yes, behind gilded words, that's right. And poised princesses, she exposed a sinister world of violence, madness, and dangerous enchantments. And uh, no one could really do that like Tanith Lee. She was, uh, she was quite good at this sort of thing, so... Redder Than Blood, uh, back available again from Daw Books, I guess, in April. Okay, moving on here, we have something from HarperCollins. And not surprisingly, we are getting the TV tie-in edition of Neil Gaiman's American Gods, which, as you know, is now uh, a series on the stars, I believe, yes. And this edition of it, again, with the TV cover, uh, comes out uh, tomorrow, March 28th. And uh, you already know... Yeah, most of you have probably already read this a long time ago. Uh, I just looked in the front, and this is the text of the 10th anniversary, like, expanded author's preferred uh, uh, version, which it would be, I guess. But uh, all right then, well, here you go, new trade paperback uh, TV tie-in edition of the Hugo-winning novel American Gods. I reviewed American Gods when it originally came out, and I'm thinking that it's one that I probably need to reread and reevaluate, because my... I get the impression that it might be one where my opinion would change. Uh, okay, so here we have another random penguin title. Could be a hardcover of some kind. 
And it is. It's the finished copy of Cold Welcome by Elizabeth Moon. Uh, this comes out April the 11th, and this is the first novel in a new series set in her universe uh, the, of a previous series, Vata's War, uh, with uh, following the adventures of uh, Commander Kailara Vata. I read the Vata's War books. thought they were pretty good, uh, on the whole. It's been many, many years, though, so I think, you know, they, it might require a reread uh, to... Uh, to get before I get into this one, or maybe not. Uh, but uh, it's five books, though, so it would be a it would be a real task to to recover re reevaluate that whole series. But in any event, uh, let's see. After nearly a decade away, Nebula Award winning author Elizabeth Moon makes a triumphant return to science fiction with this installment in a thrilling new series featuring the dairy, daring hero of her acclaimed Vata's War. Sequence. Cold Welcome. Summoned to the home planet of her family's business empire, Space Fleet Commander Kalira Vata is told to expect the hero's welcome, but instead she's thrown into danger unlike any other she has faced and finds herself isolated, unable to communicate with the outside world, commanding a motley group of unfamiliar troops and struggling day, to, day by day to survive in a deadly environment with sabotaged gear. Only her undeniable talent for command can give her ragtag band a fighting chance. So it's that kind of uh, science fiction adventure, and uh, yeah, if you enjoy that sort of thing, and if you liked the earlier series, April the 11th, in hardcover from Del Rey. And moving on, White Envelope, usually a tour title. And it is, this is Gather Her Round, the author is Alex Bledsoe. This is uh, the newest novel in his series, The Tufa, uh, which uh, I have, I think, some of them. I don't know if I have all of them. Uh, but this is a very, high, a very highly thought of a fantasy series. I guess dealing with uh, myths and legends in the the Appalachian uh, territory of the United States. It says, Love and tragedy are not strange bedfellows among the Tufa. Young Kira Rogers disappears while hiking in the woods by Needsville. When her half-eaten remains are discovered, the blame falls upon a herd of wild hogs, a serious threat in this rural community. In response, the county's best trackers, including game warden Jack Cates and ex-military Tufa, Bronwyn Chess, are assembled to hunt them down. And then uh, I guess uh, they they discover a bit more than they bargained for in all of this. But, uh, you know, yeah, the earlier volumes were The Hum and the Shiver, Wisp of a Thing, and Long Black Curl. And so this would be the fourth of these. And uh, this, oh, apparently, well, according to this, this has been out now for a little while. Just haven't seen it. Uh, it came out March the 7th, evidently. All right, well, then glad to have finally gotten it. Last week had some late tour arrivals, and I guess here we have another one. But uh, nice to have it all the same. But uh, Gather Her Round by Alex Bledsoe is now available from Tor. And what is this? This is also from Tor, but it's not, not in a white envelope. Hmm. Maybe it's something special. All right, then. This is something of which I was completely 100% previously unaware. But I guess it's a thing. Uh, it's from Tor. Uh, it is the arc for a book called Slaves of the Switchboard of Doom. The author is Bradley Shank. Uh, it comes out June the 13th, and it's described as a madcap illustrated mashup of Metropolis, that old silent film, and Futurama. Okay. This June, Tor Books is proud to publish the debut retrofuturist illustrated novel, uh, Slaves of the Switchboard of Doom. Shank's debut is witty, snappy, and right out of a 1950s vision of the future with an intriguing mystery. Who is running the switchboard and why? If Fritz Lang's Metropolis somehow mated with Futurama... Their mutant offspring might be this. Inspired by the future imagined at the 1939 World's Fair. Okay, I I'm on board. This hilarious, beautifully illustrated adventure by writer and artist Bradley W. Shank is utterly unlike anything else in science fiction. A gonzo, totally bonkers, gut-busting look at the world of tomorrow, populated with dashing, bubble-helmeted heroes, faithful robot sidekicks, mad scientists, plucky rocket engineers, sassy, sassy switchboard operators... They have to be sassy. Space pirates and much, much more enhance the route by two dozen astonishing illustrations. After a surprise efficiency review, the switchboard operators of Retropolis find themselves replaced by a mysterious system they don't understand. Nola Gardner pools their severance pay to hire Dash Kent, freelance adventurer and apartment manager, to find out what happened. Dash discovers that the replacement switchboard is only one element of a plan concocted by an insane civil engineer, a plan so vast that it reaches from Metropolis to the moon. Uh, okay, okay, cute. Um, yeah, all right. Yeah, I, 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 can, I can be on board for this. Sounds like it could be fun in the right frame of mind. Uh, and I like the uh, 1939 World's Fair angle. Did you know that you can search YouTube and you can find actual color home movies, not like digitally colorized, but color home movies, 
uh, that people took at the 1939 World's Fair. That, that was a thing that existed. Um, if you were a movie-making hobbyist, and there were several, uh, there was a community of those back in the day, you could get like this early color film and uh, make your home movies with it. And some of that footage has survived. And you can find it on YouTube if you search. It's really cool to see. No sound, but it's color movies of, you know, people walking around at the World's Fair completely unaware that the world was about to be thrown into horrible war. And, you, it, and so it's kind of interesting to look at in that perspective, you know, this optimistic vision of the world of tomorrow and it's all going to be great. And then that very year, everything went to shit. But anyway, <laughs> that was a digression. Slaves of the Switchboard of Doom, like I said, comes out June 13th. Let me know in the comments. All right, moving on. Now we have this massive random penguin envelope, which has, definitely has multiple titles in it. Well, it is. It's a big stack of books, April Random Penguin titles, and the first of these is Red Sister by Mark Lawrence, which is the uh, the beginning of a new series, uh, first book of The Ancestor. Gonna be honest, I read Mark Lawrence's very, very first book way back in the day. Uh, I think it was Prince of Thorns, which at the time was being raved about as this guy is the new big thing. And I read the book, to be perfectly honest, was not all that impressed. But I'm still interested in following his career. And so with this being a new series, I, I think I'm really kind of keen to take this up. And I may finish some of the earlier series to see, you know, how he evolves and improves as a writer, because I never am going to dismiss a writer um, based just on, like, one reading of the first book. Because you expect writers to improve. And uh, so anyway, but Red Sister, Mark Lawrence, looks intriguing to me. Um, I'm going to guess it's probably in his uh, grim dark vein. Uh, yes, a stunning fantasy, epic, epic fantasy series about a secretive order of holy warriors. At the convent of Sweet Mercy, young girls are raised to be killers. In some few children, the old blood shows, gifting rare talents that can be honed to deadly or mystic effect. But even the mistresses of sword and shadow don't truly understand what they've purchased when Nona Gray is brought to their halls, a, blood, a bloodstained child of nine... Falsely accused of murder, guilty of worse, Nona is stolen from the shadow of the noose. It takes ten years to educate a red sister in the ways of blade and fist, but under Abbess Glass's care, there is much more to learn than the arts of death. Among her class, Nona finds a new family and new enemies. Hmm. Okay then, Red Sister by Mark Lawrence. Sounds like it could be pretty kick-ass. Let me know in the comments. And next up, we have The House of Binding Thorns, which is the uh, sequel to The House of Shattered Wings by Aliette de Bedard. This is a series that is about a magical war set in Paris, uh, which always looks very intriguing. And so, uh, yeah, so this comes out again in April from Ace Books uh, here in the U.S. So let me know about this one if you want me to go ahead and get caught up with this series for you guys. And then next from C.J. Cherry from Doll Books, we have Convergence, which is the next a volume in the ongoing, ever ongoing, never ending Foreigner Universe novels. And so I'm not even going to try to give you a plot synopsis of this one, but I know that it has involved. It's this whole saga of the human, you know, humans coming into contact with these aliens and I guess trying to sort of uh, you know, mesh with their society, as it were, even though that there, there are fundamental basics in the way these aliens think and the way humans think that are very, very different. Uh, but anyway, uh, this also, I believe, would be the longest continuing series that Cherry has ever done. I think the first one, uh, Foreigner, came out way back in 1994 or something. And it's just been chugging along. And it's told in a series of trilogy-sized arcs. So three novels, three novels, three novels, three novels, and it goes on like that. But Convergence, again, and April, doll book's title. And finally, last up in this envelope is Bound. This is Benedict Jaca's new uh, Alex Virus uh, urban fantasy novel. And a quick peek in the front tells me that this is number eight. So I have quite a bit of catching up to do. But if you are a fan, uh, you'll be happy to know that uh, this one is now coming out. And it's just described very quickly. As uh, Jim Butcher thinks it's a gorgeously realized world with a uniquely powerful, vulnerable protagonist. So um, here you are, Bound, now available from Ace by Benedict Jaca. Okay, everybody, we're getting near the end here, but this one is from Simon and & Schuster. And uh, let's have a look. And it is. This is an arc for what looks to be another one of these serial box publishing uh, sort of shared world serial novels, as it were. This one's called The Witch Who Came In From The Cold. Uh, the publication date on it will be the 13th of June. And let's see. Again, no. That's just a packing slip, not really a sell sheet. Let's see what we have. Uh, Prague, 1970. Great powers eye each other across the Iron Curtain. Secret warriors wage secret wars, some with guns, some with words, and some with magic. CIA officer Gabe Pritchard has a mission to transport a critical defector back to the U.S., but Gabe also has a secret. 
uh, on a job in Egypt. He stumbled into what he thought was a Soviet cell meeting, but Soviet cells don't have altars or sacrificial knives. Mm. Uh, now Gabe has, a spl has splitting headaches, like there's something burrowing inside his skull, and finding help means joining a different and much colder war. Oh dear. So, Witch Who Came In From The Cold, I like the concept, and let's see, the creators of this were Lindsay Smith and Max Gladstone. Max Gladstone of the uh, Craft Sequence fame, and the writers include them, as well as Cassandra Rose Clark, Ian Tregillis, cool, and Michael Swanwick. That's a good group of collaborators. So, all right, June the thir 13th from Saga Press, The Witch Who Came In From The Cold. Okay, getting close to the bottom, guys. Uh, last, uh, second to last on the list, we have another random Penguin hardcover. Okay, I'm very pleased to see this. This is one that actually came out, I believe, this week. Um, it's science fiction novel. It's one of those, like The Martian, that's getting mostly marketed as uh, mainstream fiction. But uh, in any event, it is SF. It's called The Wanderers. The author's Meg Howery. This came out on the 14th. Uh, so let's see it. And it follows three astronauts as the audition for the first ever mission to Mars. An experience that will push the boundary between real and unreal test their relationships, and leave each of them and their families changed forever. Inspired by real-life experiments designed to test the psychological and physiological demands of a human mission to Mars, is how this is described. Okay, and it says readers of Station Eleven, Karen Joy Fowler, and Ruth Ozeki will love this imaginative, witty work of literary fiction and its moving tribute to human relationships defined as support incredible scientific achievements. Okay, then. And then it goes on to talk about the, uh, the astronauts involved, and so, uh, all right, then. So The Wanderers, uh, this has looked very intriguing to me, uh, you know, since it first emerged. It did look like it was going to be one of those books in the Station Eleven vein. So uh, Meg Howery, uh, out now. Let me know in the comments. And finally, 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 we have this one last random penguin package, which is, again, multiple items. And the first of these looks pretty exciting. This one comes out, it says, July 25th, and it's Age of Swords by Michael Sullivan. This is the sequel to Age of Myth. Uh, his latest epic fantasy, so if you are a fan of the Ryria Revelation series, and this is his new series, and it's a stunning looking book. And so again, I guess I don't really want to give away uh, too much, but the, the series is called Legends of the First Empire. And uh, like I said, uh, July 25th for this one, from Michael J. Sullivan. Also, we have the latest in the ongoing Harry Turtle Dove assembly line of alternate history, and this one is called Armistice, and it is the third book so far in his series called The Hot War which follows Bombs Away and Fallout, and I guess the whole idea is, well, this one's called Armistice. So, uh, and it's set in an alternate 1950s, it says, in which General MacArthur ignites a nuclear war that nearly destroys the planet. Third and final installment in an all-new series from the standard bearer of alternate history. So, Armistice wrapping up the hot war on July the 18th from Delray Books. And everybody, that is what I have for this week. Hell of a week. I might have miss my count initially, but it's still a pretty impressive stack of stuff. I mean, it comes up, you know, nearly to my knee, just all of them sitting there. You know the drill, as always, light up those comments, let me know which of these looks most interesting and exciting to you, which you want to see me prioritize for review. Otherwise, if you enjoyed watching, hit the like button, share the video, and above all, please sub. If you haven't done so, that's how SFF 180 continues to grow. And you can also support the channel at its Tee Public store and at my Patreon. Uh, where uh, my Patreon supporters, the Recruits in Winx Army, get to see Mailbag Monday every Sunday night, a little bit early. So I want to thank all of those people for their very, very wonderful and generous support, and I want to thank all of you for watching. And until I see you guys next time, happy reading. <laughs>